Starship Stage 0 is the core foundation of Starship program, but it's also considered the most difficult part. After many redesigns, this foundation has once again visibly sustained some damage after SpaceX conducted Starship Flight 8, raising questions about its durability and stability for supporting the ambitious launch frequency planned for Starship in the future. So, how exactly did Starship Flight 8 destroy the launch pad? Will Starbase Launch Pad B fix this? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. When Starship Flight 8 concluded, we were still focused primarily on the causes of the Starship explosion, but let's not forget that a crucial aspect we need to pay attention to is the ground infrastructure supporting each Starship launch at the launch site. The launch site includes the orbital launch pad and related ground support equipment, GSE. Regarding the launch pad itself, we can visibly see that there were no serious issues causing unusual problems for the launch pad. Perhaps after multiple launches and thorough launch pad renovations, SpaceX has found appropriate measures to minimize the impact of the power generated by 33 Raptor engines producing up to 17 million pounds of thrust. However, another component wasn't as fortunate, the GSE. The GSE typically includes critical systems such as fuel supply lines, structural supports, sensors, and other hardware necessary for pre-launch and post-launch operations. This crucial component was reported to be damaged after the flight. Debris was scattered around the launch site vicinity. Some structures were displaced or warped, notably an alternate angle of the vaporizer that tilted significantly to one side. Additionally, the sand dunes far from the launch site, where enthusiasts and SpaceX employees typically monitor from a distance, report to media, or use as secondary observation stations, also showed damage to pre-positioned equipment there. Therefore, the power demonstrated during Starship Flight 8 is considered much more ferocious. This indicates that Booster 15's performance, perhaps its thrust, sound energy, or exhaust flow, had a wider and stronger impact radius than previous flights, such as as Flight 7. This could mean stronger sonic booms, increased vibrations, or even sand and debris propelled by the exhaust, damaging equipment positioned farther away. While many people are excited about the power Starship demonstrated during the flight, Others believe the launch infrastructure is not yet capable of withstanding this power over an extended period. Would SpaceX really allocate its valuable time and personnel after each launch to renovate the entire facility and ground support system for Starship? Of course, this might be acceptable during the initial development phase, as is currently the case, but considering the long-term ambitions for the Starship program, SpaceX and Elon Musk have always wanted to launch this giant spacecraft regularly and cost-effectively. Therefore, frankly speaking, the core issue here is that Starship's current launch pad doesn't have sufficient capability to control the tremendous flames from dozens of Raptor engines. In the future, as Starship's power increases with each version, while SpaceX continues to use the old launch pad, the area surrounding the launch tower will have to endure these fierce windstorms. This is when SpaceX's new launch pad at Pad B becomes more prominent than ever before. Pad B, located near Pad A at Starbase, represents SpaceX's next step in refining Starship's launch infrastructure. The construction of Pad B began after early Starship flights highlighted the need for more robust ground systems. Unlike Pad A's initial design, evidence suggests SpaceX is incorporating lessons learned, particularly regarding exhaust management. The trench's primary goal is to redirect this energy horizontally, protecting the pad, booster, and surroundings while supporting SpaceX's rapid reusability ambitions by minimizing post-launch repairs. Unlike traditional deep trenches, such as NASA's 40-foot LC-39A design, Pad B's trench is built partially above ground due to Boca Chica's high water table, which is just a few feet below the surface. On February 4, 2025, a shallow excavation reinforced with elevated concrete walls, forming a channel likely 50 to 100 feet long and 20 to 30 feet wide, scaled larger than the Massey test site's 40 by 15 foot trench used for static fires in 2024. Oriented east-west toward the Gulf of Mexico, it leverages site layout and wind patterns to reduce impact on starbase facilities. At the trench's core is a flame deflector, likely a curved water-cooled steel plate positioned beneath the orbital launch mount OLM. Inspired by Elon Musk's post-flight one mention of a massive water-cooled steel plate in April 2023, this deflector, possibly sloped or parabolic, redirects exhaust from vertical to horizontal flow. Made of heat-resistant steel to endure the Raptor's 2,600 degrees Celsius exhaust and 300-plus bar pressures, it's supported by water jets or a continuous flow system, as hinted by steel staging and pipe 
The trench integrates a water deluge system, building on Pad A's post-flight one upgrades to suppress acoustic energy and cool exhaust gases. With the Raptors producing shock waves over 160 decibels, high-pressure nozzles, likely embedded in the trench walls or deflector, spray water upward and outward, potentially exceeding Pad A's 1.2 million gallons per launch to match Booster 15's ferocious output from Flight 8. Drainage poses a challenge in the shallow trench. Pumps, or sloped channels, unseen but inferred from site conditions, likely remove water to prevent flooding in Boca Chica's marshy terrain. Reinforcement is key to the trench's durability. Its walls and base use high-strength concrete, possibly Fondag-like material from Pad A repairs or a heat-resistant mix tested at Massey, while a steel grid observed in February 2025 X posts may sit above the trench to support the OLM or propellant lines. This elevates the launch mount, allowing exhaust to flow freely into the trench below. The design draws from Pad A's lessons, Massey's successful static fire trench, and NASA's Saturn V diverter, blending innovation with proven concepts. Performance-wise, the trench should reduce debris scatter and shockwave reflection, addressing Flight 8's aftermath while the cooled deflector manages heat loads. It promises faster pad turnaround than Pad A's concrete fixes, though it may need maintenance for erosion from repeated launches. Challenges include water seepage from the shallow design, untested capacity against Starship's thrust, and potential wear on the deflector. As of March 8, 2025, the trench's concrete is largely complete, with steel and water systems in progress, eyeing operational status by mid-2025, pending OLM integration and tests. This will be the key to SpaceX's rapid Starship turnaround in the future. It will lead to a spacecraft capable of doing everything in space and being completely reusable after just a month or even a week. Throughout history, there has never been a spacecraft like this, except perhaps for the space shuttle from decades past, which also had reusability capabilities. But each reuse required significant time, money, and effort. Starship will shatter that thinking for what is the world's largest rocket. Concluding our fascinating Starship news, we also have new information that I suspect many space enthusiasts will find intriguing. News about the secret X-37B space plane. On March 7, 2025, the enigmatic X-37B military space plane gracefully returned to Earth, landing at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California after an impressive 434 days in orbit. The U.S. Space Force proudly announced the successful completion of the spacecraft's seventh mission, designated Orbital Test Vehicle 7, OTV-7, which launched on December 28, 2023. This mission marked several groundbreaking milestones for the program, including its inaugural flight atop SpaceX's powerful Falcon Heavy rocket and its venture into a highly elliptical Earth orbit, HEO, a significant departure from its previous operational regimes. Chief of Space Operations General Chance Saltzman praised the mission's achievements, stating, Mission 7 broke new ground by showcasing the X-37B's ability to flexibly accomplish its test and experimentation objectives across orbital regimes. This adaptability underscores the space plane's evolving role as a versatile platform for pushing the boundaries of space technology and operations. One of the mission's standout accomplishments was its demonstration of aerobraking maneuvers, a fuel-efficient technique that leverages atmospheric drag during multiple orbital passes to alter the spacecraft's trajectory. This capability is a game-changer for the Space Force, which is increasingly prioritizing space domain awareness and orbital agility. By employing aerobraking, the X-37B can subtly adjust its orbit without relying on traditional propulsion methods, effectively giving it a stealth mode. Unlike conventional thruster burns, which produce detectable signatures that adversaries could track, aerobraking allows the space plane to maneuver discreetly, enhancing its tactical advantage in an increasingly contested space environment. The mission wasn't solely focused on military objectives. It also carried NASA experiments, blending civilian science with defense priorities, and conducted space domain awareness tests to gather critical data on orbital maneuvering. These tests aimed to evaluate how well various sensors and tracking systems, both terrestrial and space-based, perform when monitoring spacecraft across diverse orbital regimes. The insights gained from these experiments are expected to shape the development of next-generation space technologies, bolstering the Space Force's ability to maintain situational awareness in orbit and respond to emerging challenges. The X-37B program, a collaborative effort between the Department of the Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, the United States Space Force and aerospace giant Boeing 
has long been shrouded in secrecy. Boeing not only provides the reusable space plane itself, but also supports its mission operations, ensuring the vehicle's reliability across its extended deployments. While much of the X-37B's activities remain classified, the Space Force has gradually peeled back the curtain, offering glimpses into its role as a testbed for innovative space concepts. This mission, in particular, highlights its dual purpose, advancing military capabilities while contributing to broader scientific exploration. Since its debut in 2010, the X-37B has captivated observers with its sleek, autonomous design and marathon-like missions. Resembling a miniature space shuttle, the uncrewed spacecraft measures about 29 feet long with a wingspan of roughly 15 feet. Its ability to launch into orbit, conduct prolonged experiments, and return to Earth for reuse sets it apart as a unique asset in the U.S. space arsenal. OTV-7's 434-day stint brings the program's total time in space to over 3,774 days across its seven missions, a testament to its endurance and versatility. The choice of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy for OTV-7's launch was a strategic one. Known for its heavy lift capacity, the rocket enabled the X-37B to reach the higher, more elliptical orbit required for this mission's objectives. This shift from the more circular, low-Earth orbits of past missions expanded the space plane's operational envelope, allowing it to test new scenarios and technologies in a challenging environment. As the Space Force looks to the future, the lessons learned from OTV-7 will undoubtedly influence its approach to space operations. The ability to maneuver stealthily, monitor the orbital domain, and integrate civilian experiments into military missions positions the X-37B as a cornerstone of America's space strategy. While the specifics of its classified payloads remain under wraps, the mission's broader implications are clear. The U.S. is committed to maintaining a technological edge in space, adapting to new threats, and exploring innovative ways to operate beyond Earth's atmosphere. With its landing on March 7, 2025, the X-37B closed another chapter in its storied history, paving the way for future missions that will continue to push the frontiers of space exploration and defense. As General Saltzman emphasized, this mission's success is a stepping stone toward greater flexibility and resilience in orbit, a critical advantage in an era where space is no longer a distant frontier, but a dynamic domain of human activity. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.